Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I am free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being sir, sir? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beachwear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. What? Are you being so, so? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so, so? What would you like to see? What? Are you being so, so? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so, so? What would you like to see? The London Fashions Week ended Friday. It's now one minute to nine, Monday morning. Captain Wagstaff, I have only got one pair of hands. So unless you can find an intelligent octopus to work for my wages, you shall have to wait. <laughs> hurry up, Harry. His veins are standing out. No, 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 no. Take this one, dummy. Well, well, come along. Hurry up and tidy this display counter. As you know, we have a new assistant arriving this morning, and I don't want you to get the idea that this is a slack, lazy department. I must say, I'm really looking forward to having a nice English gentleman on the floor. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. <laughs> the English do have a way with them. Oh, yes, it'll be nice to meet a man who treats ladies like ladies and opens doors for them and that. Oh, well, of course, speaking for myself, most men still open doors for me. That's very true, Mr. Mankiewicz. I've seen men open doors for Mrs. Crawford. Of course, when they see a face, they shut up again real quick. Ignore him. He's an animal. Are you being served? We will hurry up with that. I don't see why we need a new assistant. It'll mean less commission. Oh, I understand he has an excellent reputation. And as the owner of the store where he's been employed is related to the owner of our store, it's up to us to make him feel welcome. But it's one minute past nine. <laughs> He'd be a lot less welcome than he would be if he'd been on time. There you are, madam. One disco fever dancing skirt and one pair of fluorescent tights. Oh, can I interest you in these? <laughs> if you lose your partner in the dark, you only have to shake it about a bit and he'll find you from your tingling. <laughs> that will do, Miss Buxton. They're ten dollars a pair. Ah, oh, think about it. Oh, of course, madam, but don't be too long. They're all the rage and the price will probably go up on Wednesday. I can't see us selling many pairs of these. I mean, what sort of person would wear them? Oh, possibly those that are going to a dance tonight at the social club and uh, want to create a bit of a stir. Oh, you don't mean... <laughs> <laughs> I've just been informed that the new man is on his way up. Now, straighten your tie, Mr. Randall. Now, come along, Mrs. Crawford and Miss Buxton. Now, we'll um, stand in order of seniority. That's me first, then Wagstaff and... Uh, um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Crawford, and then Mr. Mankiewicz, etc., etc. What do you need your bag for? Oh, I thought I'd take a snapshot just for the occasion, and uh, <laughs> I bought my little camera. Well, as the new rhyme is a long way from home, I want everybody here to bend over backwards to help him. Understood? Understood, sir. <laughs> Well, who's going to be first to make him feel at home? <laughs> Welcome to Bird Brothers, Mr. Um, uh, Humphreys. Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys. <laughs> Welcome to Australia, Mr. Humphreys. I'm Mr. Dunkley. This is my floor and I'm very proud of it. Yes, you've got a nice shine on it. What sort of polish do you have? <laughs> uh, Mr. Dunkley is a manager of both the ladies' and the gentlemen's department. I am Captain Wagstaff. My position is floor walker. <laughs> I'm the man who'll be keeping his eye on you. There's always one. <laughs> This is Mrs. Crawford, head of ladies, and Miss Buxton, her junior. May I say how pleased we are, and I am unanimous in this. And that also goes for my assistant. Uh, do you mind if I take a photo just to mark the occasion? Oh, I'd be flattered. And uh, this is Mr. Bankovich, who'll be over you. And this is young Mr. Randall, who'll be under you. <laughs> just like being a tomb. Uh, just put your hat 
on and, and stand there while I get my distance. Uh, yes, well, hurry up, Mrs. Crawford. Uh, things are a little different here in Australia. You may find some of our customs strange, but I'm sure you'll be able to adjust yourself in time. Oh, the truth! Another one! <laughs> Take that away, Mr. Cocker. I have been told to put that there chair there by a higher authority. And I don't have to tell you who it was. Mr. Cocker, I won't allow you to speak to me like that in front of the staff. Too late. They've heard. <laughs> Mr. Cocker, I am asking you for the last time to tell me who ordered you to put that chair there. You know, you're like the Gestapo you are. But when our lot gets in, I'll be the one asking the questions. And you better come up with some good answers. Captain Wagstaff. Not while I've admonished you, Mr. Cocker. In that case, Mr. Cocker, I shall report this incident and deal with the matter myself. <laughs> Captain Wagstaff, have you gone mad? You did that deliberately. Quite right, sir. I was a witness. He just tried to assassinate the founder of the store. Oh, I can't apologize enough, sir. I had no idea it was you. If you'd asked me nicely, I would have told you. <laughs> These sort of pranks are very dangerous, Wagstaff. Don't do it again. Uh, now, where's that man, Bumfries? <laughs> Bumfries, sir, with a huff. I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm free. Uh, well, you've been highly recommended by my cousin, Mr. Grace, in England. Oh, thank you. So I just remember the motto of my store, and you'll be all right. What's that? If at first you don't succeed, you'll be out of your backside. <laughs> been out that way once already. <laughs> well, that's that taken care of. You've all done very well. Excuse me, sir. You came here to tell them about the health scheme. What health scheme? Uh, the one we were working on in the office. Um, uh, shall I tell them the latest developments? Yes, you'd better. I'll only mess it up. <laughs> well, gather around, everybody. Mm -hmm. I do wish you'd get on with it. My leg's going to sleep. What was that? Mrs. Crawford's tingling knickers that they were wearing in discos. They're very popular with my girls, you know, aren't they? <laughs> oh, well, now that it's out, I bought myself a pair when I stopped off in Singapore. <laughs> I use them as a burglar alarm. <laughs> Shake it about, then. I can't hear anything. Neither can I. You think somebody broke in when I wasn't looking? <laughs> May we return to the subject of this meeting? Uh, yes, indeed. Well, um, Bone Brothers have worked out a pension bonus scheme which will provide a lump sum for each of you on retirement. Now, Bone Brothers are praying for the scheme, provided, of course, you pass a medical examination to be held in two weeks' time. On the other hand, if you don't pass the examination, you'll have to pay for the scheme yourself or not take part in it at all. Excuse me, Mr. Dunkley. Uh, may we know who's to be the examining doctor? Uh, Mr. Bones, private physician. Not only highly regarded as a diagnostician, but also homeopathic. That'll be something to look forward to. <laughs> Just come in. Are you a vegetarian, Mr. Mankovich? I intend to get a clean bill of health of this medical examination. <laughs> and too much meat gives you blood pressure. Yeah, if you eat all that cabbage, you'll have more pressure than you can handle. <laughs> I think we should all take care with what we eat. I read the other day that we are what we eat. Just how long have you been eating sour grapes and ugly fruit? <laughs> About as long as you've been eating pig's heads and sheep's brains. <laughs> I'm going to be good to bring on acid indigestion. And we've all got to be fit for that medical. Mm. I suppose I was at my best when I was 25. Do you know, I took some yoga lessons. After about three weeks, I could put my ankles right round the back of my head and walk round on my hands. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, that'll come in handy one day. <laughs> I told me, did it? No, but I'm working on it. <laughs> well, what happens if you leave Bone Brothers before you're 65? Do you get a refund? Oh, are you thinking of leaving, Miss Buxton? Oh, well, with any luck, I won't be stuck in this dump for the rest of my life. No, she just may be hearing the sound of wedding bells. Ah, <laughs> oh, you meant she's thinking of getting a flat near the church. <laughs> People do still ask girls to marry them, you know. Not all men are after a fumble by the fire exit. So that's where you take them. <laughs> 
I think we ought to make every effort to get as fit as we possibly can for that medical. Well, what we should really do is to is to go to a gymnasium and have a workout with a proper instructor. Oh, that could be quite expensive. I mean, some of those courses cost about sixty dollars. Oh, dancers are fit. What's that got to do with it? Well, I've got a friend who's a dancer. They're over here on tour at the moment. I'm sure I could arrange a lesson for next to nothing. What sort of dancing does he do? What makes you think it's a he? <laughs> My friend's a lady ballet dancer. I'll give her a ring. Oh, yes, I did ballet once. It's just like keep fit to music. You have to put your feet up on the bar. Yeah, Mrs. Crawford's already trying for that at the local. <laughs> uh, uh, there you go, darling. Uh, straight through that door there. The gentlemen of the bedding department are all ready for you. They get their clothes off. Who was that? That's the doctor doing the medical examination. When's yours? Next week. Doesn't leave much time. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Why am I doing this? She's homeopathic. Oh, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Here you are, darling. There's your other bar. Oh. Fred from the music department will be playing for you. Thank you, Mr. Cocker. Good luck. Hurry up, class. I've only got half an hour. <laughs> I can't bend down far enough to do my shoe up. Well, you'll just have to get someone to help you, won't you? Mr. Randall. <laughs> I'll stop fooling about, Mr. Randall, and tie up my shoe. <laughs> Hurry up, Mrs. Crawford, they're nearly ready. <laughs> Mr. Randall, don't say one word. I was. I wasn't going to. My mind was on something else altogether. I was just thinking it's about time Carlton got a new full back. If your brains was dynamite, you wouldn't have enough to blow your ears off. <laughs> well, personally, I'm still convinced we should have worn tracksuits. That would have been another eight dollars. And Mr. Bone was reluctant to go to those lengths. Well, I must say I'm reluctant to go to these lengths. <laughs> Are we all gathered? All except Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Divine. You look so young. I adore your perfume. <laughs> I'm mad about your aftershave. <laughs> darling. Oh, darling. <laughs> Do you remember the first time we met? Oh, shall I ever forget it? <laughs> you were in Swan Lake. Om ching, om ching, om ching, om ching. La 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 Now the principals have finished. Do the chorus get a look in? Oh, yes, of course. Please take your places on the bar. Mr. Randall, this is not your bar. That is your bar. What's the difference? This bar is for management only. I've been thrown out of better bars than this. <laughs> Everyone in the fifth position. What's that? I know what the fifth position is. Yeah, I thought you might. Ready with the music? Uh, yeah, the orchestra's standing by. Right, now this is the first movement. Ready? And... Claymore, darling, do you remember that step we did? 
it in Swan Lake? I can just about manage it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's improvise on that. Let's keep it light and gay. Well, I'll keep it light. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> Let's improvise on that, everybody. <laughs> Come in, please. Where's the doctor? She'll be back in a jiffy. There's a cupboard over there. Take your clothes off. And, oh, if you're shy... You can get behind the screen. Where shy? <laughs> oh, there's something about a soldier. Something about the soldier. Something about the soldier. Oh, come on, Mr. Randall, get on with it. <laughs> uh, when I was in the army, we were stripping off all the time. Yeah, I heard it was like that in the Navy, too. <laughs> My brother goes to one of those nudist colonies. Ooh. Nobody's allowed to wear the stitch, except the chef. And apparently he wears a metal apron when he's chopping the parsley. <laughs> right. All I need is some hangers now. <laughs> Come on, gentlemen. Everything. <laughs> With a red and magic push. Oh, no! Mr. Hudson! You are required to remove your clothes. Who said so? Let's get round here. I'm not taking anything else off until you turn and face the other way. I am not facing the other way. <laughs> oh, hurry up, the nurse will be back in a minute. Where's she gone? She's gone to fetch us some hangers. Holes <laughs> to Newcastle. The alarm's working. <laughs> Will you get them off? <laughs> I must write a letter home. They'll never believe me when I tell them what I've seen down under. I wish that nurse had hurry up with our dressing gowns. Well, if you're embarrassed, we'll talk about something totally unconnected with our present situation. The sooner the better. Mrs. Manco's making a hot pot for supper. <laughs> That's very interesting. Well, I mention it because I promised to buy the vegetables in our food department. What are you getting? Frozen sprouts. <laughs> I reckon it must be the air conditioning in here. Is this the right place for the doctor? Yes, but she... <laughs> She isn't here yet. Uh, uh, why are you all hiding behind that screen? Because we've got no clothes on. Oh! <laughs> it's not very often we have you at a disadvantage, Captain Wagstaff. I am not at a disadvantage. Yes, she hasn't looked behind the screen yet. <laughs> Shall we take a peek? Well, I don't suppose we'll get another chance. Come on. Thank you for me, Mrs. Oh, it's an order. Captain Wagstaff, I've got less to lose than most of you, but I really don't think we should stand here and be insulted. I quite agree, Mr. Humphreys. Right, left turn, double march. Here's the medical. 
medical report for the ladies and gentlemen's department, sir. They'll all be here in a minute to hear the results. Oh, and Mr. Cocker's on his way as well. What's he want? He's got the report for your office furniture. Remember, you wanted to insure it. You've got some lovely antiques, haven't you? What do you mean, antiques? It was all new when I first came here. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind waiting here, Mr. Bone will see you in a moment. <laughs> Blimey, the lost tribe. <laughs> Cocker is uh, with the report, as you requested. Come in. That'll be our medical report. All right, everyone, let's listen. We shall do nothing of the kind, Mr. Randall. On the other hand, if we overheard, that'd be another matter. <laughs> oh, I've lost my glasses. Read it to me, Mr. Cocker. Certainly, sir. Uh, well, now, this one is the oldest. Ah, uh, yes, the one with the bow front and short legs. <laughs> That'll be you, Mr. Manker. I want to listen. Yes, the, uh, the top's in very good condition. Bit of dry rot in the legs. <laughs> oh, and the knob's going to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> what about that pretty little piece? That must be you, Miss Buxton. It certainly won't be you. <laughs> well, uh, outwardly in very good condition. Unfortunately, it's got a screw loose. <laughs> and the knockers aren't genuine. Bloody cheek! And uh, that brings us to this one here. The big chest. <laughs> Once used a lot by soldiers. There are a lot of strange things in the drawers. <laughs> Once they're removed, you can plainly see the ravages of time. <laughs> oh, and there's rising damp in the bottom. <laughs> and now we come to the poof. <laughs> yes, outwardly in very good condition. A bit older than it looks. <laughs> A bit saggy in the middle. <laughs> but probably worth hanging on to if you're prepared to have it stuffed. <laughs> Are you being sir? I'm hungry tonight. Mm. Are you being sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really can your feet wear. Well, these are gay, there's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mask. I'm being so I'm hungry, and I'm free. I'm being so What would you like to see? 